So we define autism as a behavioral syndrome, which means it's a co-occurrence of certain behavioral phenomena. There are two key phenomena. One are certain kinds of social deficits, deficits uh, in regards to social interaction. And the other domain is a little bit of a messier uh, umbrella term. Um, we use the term ritualistic repetitive behaviors. Autism is defined by behaviors only. So it's very different from diabetes that we have a very specific biological test about insulin levels or a sickle cell that we know is due to a single gene. And as a result, um, it's a bit of a hodgepodge, frankly. Uh, it's defined uh, clinically on the basis of these behaviors because currently that's what we treat. But what we've learned over the last 10 or 15 years, particularly from genetics, is that there are multiple autisms. We have some people with autism that have intellectual disability, what used to be termed mental retardation. We have some that have high IQs. We have some that have more severe ritualistic and repetitive behaviors, and some that have milder ritualistic and repetitive behaviors. As we sort of look under the hood, when we look at the brain or we look at genetics, um, based on defining people as having autism, we find a bunch of different stuff. And that's essentially a problem in our field um, because uh, uh, we find too much. <laughs>